Today FM is awesome in Ba. We love you today FM. Today FM rocks in the story and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM is number one in Tele. Today FM rocks in Otaka. Woohoo! Today FM is the most popular station in the scene. We love everything about Today FM here at Golden Point Reki Reki. Everybody in Singapore loves Today FM. Today FM rocks in Ba. Bulan 2 saya betul FM en nampak dua air rakyat Bula FM nampak dua inosor Gue etapa ke buat sekolah sama Bula FM ngan Bula FM nampak dua air korbu Bula FM nampak dua air sawa Bula FM nampak dua air lotokan Bula Nampak dua nampak Bula FM memba Bula FM nampak dua air nasir in Singapore Kau tak tali tak ada warung yang nampak FM yang lotokan Kau tak tali tak ada warung yang nampak FM nampak dua air In the news tonight, Prime Minister launches investment that will transform Lautoka City. Accounts clerk gets life imprisonment for killing his wife. And Fiji Airways sets its sight on Singapore and Shanghai. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade and you're watching FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama launched a multi-million dollar investment today that is set to change the image of Lautoka City. Local business giant Tapus has partnered with the Lautoka City Council to develop Tapu City Lautoka. Christopher Chand with this story. The $30 million project is a major local investment that will bring world-class shopping and creating hundreds of new jobs. In some ways, Lautoka has been eclipsed by Nandi over the many years, but it remains one of the nicest places to live in Fiji as well as being an important pillar of the economy, our sugar capital. And this new development, approved by cabinet following a transparent selection process, is going to be a wonderful addition to the city. The construction of the new shopping mall is expected to start next month and will be built on this portion of the city council's land, stretching up to the Churchill Park gates. It's expected to open by 2015. Actually, uh, you know, it, it will be, I mean, that artistic impression is very much going to be it, you know, this artistic impression that you see. Uh, we wanted to have a <coughs> presence in Lotoka for quite some time. You know, as you know, we have a very strong presence in Suva, uh, even in places like Nasori, Nakasi, Nandi, Singatoka. We always wanted to have a presence, and, but we were looking for the right opportunity. Lotoka City Council has subleased over 1,300 square meters of land to the Tapu Group, but there has been criticism of their decision. Land is money, and it was not wisely utilized. And I think people, some people have some concern about this carnival and festival. There is ample space left for carnivals and festivals. There won't be any disturbance to them. All these organizations, they can have their regular carnivals and festivals. But by having this project, it will change and enhance the landscape of Lotoka City. This is what people must understand. Besides building Tapu City Lotoka, the company will also construct car parks and improve the entrance to Churchill Park. There will be five corporate booths overlooking the park grounds. The council has also announced other major projects next year, including a four-star hotel at Shirley Park and the construction of synthetic tracks at Churchill Park. Christopher Chant, FBC News. An army officer has relayed in court today details of when he was informed of a plan to remove the government by the former land force commander Pita Ndriti. Atunai Savakatale was Ndriti's personal staff officer at that time. Ndriti is charged with one count of inciting mutiny and another of committing a seditious act. Chanel Sivan with the story. Ndriti has pleaded not guilty to the charges. It is alleged Ndriti planned to remove the government in 2010 and kill Attorney General Ayas Sayed Kayum by Christmas of 2010. Vakatale informed the court that Driti told the plan was ready and alleged the plot was created by Brigadier General Muhammad Aziz and Ratu Tevita Olela Kemba Mara. Vakatale said Aziz came to Driti's office to discuss a few matters and Driti later told him the meeting was about the plot. He also alleged Driti told him that they would ask the president to dissolve the Bainimarama government. The court heard 
there were five options that could have taken against the government. The first option was to overthrow the government. The second was to brief the Prime Minister of some dealings related to the Attorney General. The third was to sit back and wait for the government to collapse. The fourth was to ask the AG to be removed. The fifth was for the military to carry out independent investigations on matters related to the Attorney General. The trial continues in the Suva High Court. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Accounts clerk Ronil Chand of Nasinu has been sentenced to life imprisonment for killing his wife by setting her on fire. Chand was sentenced by the Suva High Court today. Chanel Sivan reports. Relief for Nath family who have waited two years for this day. Their young daughter Karishma Nath was killed by her husband in what the court said was a criminal action that caused untold heartache and sadness to Nath's parents. <laughs> Nath was 26 years old when she was set on fire by her husband after an argument. The incident took place on the morning of February 19th at their home in Nasinu. Nath took herself to CWM Hospital in Suva, suffering from first-degree burns to 40% of her body. She passed away five days later. Justice Salesi Temo, while sentencing Chand, said the facts of the events were disturbing as Chand intended to murder Nath. Her father Jitendra Nath says he wishes this does not happen to any other girl. Justice Temo said every married couple in the country would be worried and if people think their problems can be solved by killing, they should think twice. Chand must serve 18 years behind bars before he can apply for parole. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Fiji Airways is exploring new routes to Asia as part of the $1.8 million allocated to the national carry in the new budget. The airline is also considering increasing its fleet size as part of its five-year plan to grow and remain competitive against some of the world's biggest airlines. Christopher Chand reports. The arrival of the brand new A330s is not the end of the road for its fleet plans. Fiji Airways is looking at getting more aircraft to stimulate growth. We are right now working on our five years plan, which will define additional destinations, which will define growth in the next five years. And then we have to look, once we know where we want to fly, how often we want to fly, we have to look at the aircraft. And we probably have to increase the fleet in general, and the fleet size in general. Pichla says they are evaluating whether they need another Airbus or additional Boeing 737s. And the national carrier is on the go, looking for new destinations to fly to. Now we are in the process, of course, of discussing and evaluating where it makes sense for us to fly. We can only fly where we make money. Uh, Singapore, Shanghai, etc., there are many of options. Uh, if you look uh, at it from a country country's tourism perspective, we want to diversify tourism streams. So there are a lot of big markets in Southeast Asia, in Asia in general. The airline is also working on its freight capacity due to the departure of its jumbo jets. Uh, we know that with the A330, we offer a little bit less cargo capacity than with the 747s. And we listen to the exporters here who say, why did you change this aircraft? The 747 was better for us. So we try to compensate for that. So we try to make deals like with Emirates, Sky Cargo, and offer some additional frequencies, some additional cargo capacity to those exporters. PG Airways is mapping its future to ensure the airline remains profitable in a globally competitive aviation world. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Coming up after the break, 13 students suffer minor injuries in road accident. 
It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lusaka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. You listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Ba. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lusaka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Back. You're watching FBC News. A police investigation continues into a road accident which resulted in injuries to 13 students when a 10-wheeler truck collided with a bus at Loma Loma in Lautoka yesterday. None of the students from Loma Loma Public School and Gurukul Primary School was in seriously hurt. The bus was headed for Nandi with 40 students aboard. It's alleged the truck ran into the back of the bus. The truck driver escaped injury and has been questioned about the incident. In an effort to strengthen understanding of money laundering, the Financial Intelligence Unit held its fourth national conference in Suva today. The conference aimed at generating and exchanging knowledge about issues and practices to combat money laundering and other financial crimes. Ritika Pratap reports. Today's national anti-money laundering conference focused on helping the financial institutions, commercial banks, lawyers, auditors, and accountants understand their obligations in detecting money laundering under the Financial Intelligence Reporting Act. Advances in technology, we're now seeing a movement away from the use of fraudulent checks as the main means of laundering money to the use of internet hacking frauds. While the earlier form of money laundering had a visible paper trail, now with the advent of the internet age, money moves swiftly across banks and through wire transfers. Discussions arose about the role that financial institutions and non-financial businesses and professions can play to detect money laundering quickly. As far as estate agents are concerned, some of the things that they need to be looking out for are people who uh, buy property without wanting to view the property, people who are willing to pay large sums of money when the market value of the property is fairly low, uh, people who um, have chain transactions, so it'll be a company buying property and then suddenly it's transferred to another company and then another company, which is called a chain transaction. Those sorts of things for state agencies are, uh, could be potentially problematic. PG will also need to meet the new requirement under the International Anti-Money Laundering Standards. The regional bodies are required to implement uh, strong anti-money laundering measures so there's, there's no weak link in the global fight against money laundering, organized crimes, terrorist financing and so forth. So the new, ob new standards talks about countries to undertake a risk-based approach when developing policies so we can concentrate our resources where the risk is high. Since 2006, 4,054 suspicious transactions were reported by various financial institutions. Some have been dealt with by the courts, while others sought additional information. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. All schools have been made aware that they must be audited before government funds can be released, says Education Permanent Secretary Dr. Bridge Lau. Lau says this is done to ensure that all financial records are handled in a transparent manner to avoid misuse of money. He adds they will pay the funds according to the structure. First term, we just pay on according to the role. Second and third terms, we look at the audited uh, reports and uh, then we make those uh, payments. Lal says schools have time until May next year to conduct their audits and submit their report to the ministry. Fiji National University and Police Force will work together in a number of areas following the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding today. The agreement is a significant step in developing relations between the two institutions. Apisolomidoka reports. Under the agreement, police officers will be able to pursue specialized training such as forensics at the FNU in terms strengthening the capacity and skills of officers. MOU will help foster cooperation 
between the two uh, institutions and help uh, grow in terms of uh, policing, in terms of uh, education and training for uh, Fiji police officers, and of course, sharing of information and skills. Soft courses will be transferred to the FNU and the police force will be able to focus on core police training. The signing will help foster relations in key areas such as technical cooperation and training partnership. Started today, uh, both, uh, at both us and uh, Fiji Police Force, we have appointed a desk officer each. So the role of the desk officer is to ensure the implementation. So we already started working on it. A project earmarked for next year is the construction of three new police projects in Valilevu, Namaka and Nakasi. Police will work with the FNU to manage the major building projects. Apisawame Doka, FBC News. We turn to sports now and here's Jamie with the latest. Good evening. Up ahead we take a look, uh, take a look at Coach Ben Ryan's preparations for the next leg of the RV 7s and Fiji Mbati say they're ready to take on the Kangaroos with nothing to lose. That's coming up. Pato Bahe, Bame Radio Fiji 2 ke konsa ke roke online clear. Radio Fiji 2, rake rake ke log jada sunte hai. Nandi mein hum sab ki pasand Radio Fiji 2. Pahle wu ke log Radio Fiji 2 sab se jada sun rahe hai. Meri pasand Radio Fiji 2, Masuri mein sabhi ko pasand Radio Fiji 2. Tawa mein Radio Fiji 2 sabhi ko sunte hai. Radio Fiji 2 rock. Radio Fiji 2, I love you. Mirchi FM is hot. Best sound, best music, Mirchi FM rocks and record. Nandika number one station, Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is number one in nursery. Look at the Mirchi FM is hot. We are Mirchi FM rocks and Mirchi FM Dago Mama. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Due to the competitive and unpredictable nature of the IRB 7 series, any team is only as good as its last performance. The National 7 side hopes to dispel this belief and build a solid combination for the Dubai and South Africa 7s. Salin Daudakavaka reports. Fitness, or the lack of it, was listed as one of the major downfalls of the National 7 side in their last outing. The coach has addressed this issue head-on in the hope of a complete turnaround in the next leg of the IRB series. They're definitely a lot fitter than, than they were and that's down to some of the stuff we've done in training, some of their diet changes and tournaments that they've played in. So not as fit as I'd like, um, not as fit as they were going to be over the coming months, but they're certainly fitter than they were in, uh, in the Gold Coast. Ryan hopes to employ an efficient defence technique to defy one popular notion that other sides hold of Fiji. Whenever I was coach for a team playing for England playing against Fiji, I'd always always um, I'd always say just keep the ball because at some point the Fijian defence will um, will get disorganised or ill-disciplined and uh, there'll be an opportunity to find some space. I told the boys this. This is what opposition think about Fijian defence, and we've worked hard on being disciplined, working hard as a team, as a group. Um, because we don't want to defend for long periods. Leadership is a vital tool in any team unit and Ryan already has one player in mind to wear the skipper's armband. Uh, I'll say I did a fantastic job in the Gold Coast so I've, I've no reason not to, uh, not to appoint him. Um, but you know, we'll confirm that over the next 24 hours. The 12-man squad and four non-travelling reserves is being announced at this hour. Tsalen Dodakavak, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the team has just been announced in Suva. Four debutants have been named by coach Ben Ryan for the Dubai and South Africa tournaments. The Amadea duo Semi Kunatani, along with Mosese Mawalu, Warden Strongman Leo Nakasau, and New Zealand-based Chonatui Tonga will make their debut. The four, after a strong showing at the Bailey's Coral Coast Sevens over the weekend, have taken their place in the side. Making a comeback in the side is veteran Pio Tuai, while in a surprising move, Ryan has relegated Eli Tinai to the non-travelling reserves. Seasoned campaigner Osea Kolinisa will skip the side, which also has Benito Masilevu, Emosi Muleboro, Waisea Nadungu, Donesio Ratumbuli, Samu Sangiwa, and Samsoni Virviri. The Vodafone Fiji Mbati believes that it's time to level up for their Rugby League World Cup semi-final against Australia. 
Making the top four again was the initial goal for the Rich Rick Stone coach side, which is building momentum in every game. Now with the second showing with the Kangaroos lined up on Sunday morning, they've promised to hit back stronger despite the odds. Elena McDonald has more. It's now or never for this year's top four. And ironically enough, this semi-final is only the Kangaroos to lose. We've got nothing to lose. Yeah, the boys just had the recovery runs uh, today and uh, we had a day off yesterday uh, today because we travelled from uh, Preston to London and uh, we're just getting uh, organised here at the hotel and uh, the preparation just started today to do the light run and uh, the boys are looking forward to the big game against Australia. With the intent to break away from all the World Cup hype, Dumbati attended a football friendly at Wembley today between England and Germany before getting back into the thick of things with the idea to cause the biggest upset. It's going to be a very interesting match against Australia. If you look at the games, the boys have improved uh, very well and Rick has been working on uh, just trying to improve on uh, every game that they've played and take it to another level. It may be a David versus Goliath clash, but with huge yeah, support and a formidable lineup that's shown potential, who knows what could happen. For us as fans, it's a matter of sitting back, buckling up, and seeing just where this year's Rugby League World Cup takes us. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. The 2013 Pacific Cup is underway in New Zealand after kicking off in the last hour. Teams from Fiji, including Ba, Lambasa, Nandi and Suva are taking part against sides from New Zealand and Australia. FBC commentator Raymond Stodart is in New Zealand and says there's a lot of hype for the five-day event. He decided to wear Lombasa all here and uh, Lombasa had a run already yesterday at Sydney um, uh, Park and uh, the things are looking good here. One of the things that has uh, come out here that uh, the two sides will be using some of the uh, local base players here out of uh, Auckland so the, to add to the small numbers that they have bought uh, from Fiji. But looking at the uh, games today, I think the best game tonight uh, will be between the bar side taking on the Queensland side, which has um, the Kalamasi in that side and Raj Kumar, uh, former Navu and bar player. But uh, they have also <laughs> a Japanese that uh, is playing currently in the A League that is coming with the Queensland uh, uh, side. So that's the uh, best game uh, here today. And you can follow commentaries of the Pacific Cup on Radio Fiji 2 with the final to be played on Sunday. And national swimmer Matelita Mbuondromo has been appointed as Fijian Young Ambassador to the Nanjing Youth Olympic Games in China next year. Part of her role will be inspiring young athletes to be involved in sports as well as be active participants in their communities. Talen Tadakadaka has more. Fasanok has appointed one of the country's young promising swimmers to be lead peer for our National Youth Olympic squad members next year. Matili Tambon Romo's role is to be an active role model for young athletes. She'll accompany me to China in March for the chef's meeting where she'll meet uh, other youth ambassadors from all around the world. They'll participate in activities and um, these activities they'll carry on to the Youth Olympic Games in August next year. She is no stranger to the international arena, having represented the country at the 2012 London Olympics, as well as the Barcelona World Champs in June this year. I, I have a mission as a young ambassador, and uh, that's basically to promote the uh, CEP program. Uh, this is the college and education program. It's about um, promoting athletes to um, promote their sports and uh, balance it out with education and being involved in uh, communities and um, and I think, you know, that's, I think that's important for youth. The final squad to the Nanjing Youth Olympic Games will be named in July next year. Charlie Ndodokadak, FBC Sports. That is your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. Tapu Group has ventured into the air travel sector. The company made an announcement today during the launch of its new multi-million dollar shopping complex in Lautoka. This is the first time I'm making this announcement. I'm proud to announce that most recently Qantas has appointed the Tapu Group as its general sales agent for the whole of Fiji, further strengthening our foothold into the flourishing travel and tourism sector. Qantas closed its office in Suva recently. 
Weather time now, and here's the lovely Genevieve. Aw, thanks, Jackie. Feel free to throw in smart and beautiful the next time. Yes. Now, the Met Office says it was cloudy in Suva today. Yep, that's about to come up. There it is. Now, I don't know about you, but I thought it was quite sunny. We also had cloudy periods in Sabu Sabu, but all in all, a fine day for everyone. A very warm 33 in the north today. The Jet Set Town follows closely on 32. There they are at the top, while the capital reported 30 degrees. Tomorrow sees a lot of sunshine in the morning and a lot of rain in the afternoon. Do be careful if you're out at sea because there will be poor visibility in areas of showers and thunderstorms. Now, we've shown several photos from the Coral Coast, Nandi, Suva and Sabu Sabu. But today, we've got a photo all the way from Tavua. That's right, this was taken by Pa Tovi, the Magnifikina of Tavua. And that's weather. Thanks for watching. We'll catch up again tomorrow. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The main points again, Prime Minister Horenge Mbaini Marama launched a multi-million dollar investment today that will transform Lautoka City. A 32-year-old accounts clerk has been sentenced to life imprisonment for killing his wife. And Fiji Airways is exploring new opportunities to provide services to Singapore and Shanghai. To our poll question now, and we're asking, is there a role for the Commonwealth in Fiji's development? Visit our FBC website to answer. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. I'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, ni the manda. Today FM is awesome in bar. We love you today FM. Today FM rocks in the story and I love listening to today FM. Today FM is number one in Tele. Today FM rocks in Otaka. Woohoo! Today FM is the most popular station in the scene. We love everything about today FM here at Golden Point Recreation. Everybody in Singapore loves today FM. Today FM rocks in bar. Yeah!